Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we're having a hero episode where we get to sit down with a good friend of mine, Mr. Brian Logan, who is the regional sales manager in Virginia. So welcome, Brian. Hey, guys. Good morning. Hey, man. Well, we normally call these hero episodes, but with you, man, I, I may have to change that up. I may have to actually call it a legend episode because you have been called out, bro, when it comes to being a mentor by some pretty influential people. So you're doing something right, brother. I, I, maybe I'm infamous more than famous, but I'll take it. <laughs> I hear you, man. Well, look, bro, we, we love to start these off by just giving our listeners a little bit of understanding of your personal journey to the role that you're in. So could you do that for us? Absolutely. Where does one start? I guess probably the best place for me is earlier on in, in, in my life, I think I realized that um, I always like to be challenged no matter what it is. I always like to learn more, not just about what I'm doing, but about myself and try to become the best version of myself throughout my journey in, in this life and probably start off my career in the, I would call it more of the service in the fire department realm. I spent a couple of years in the fire department. And while I was going to school, I realized that I wanted to shift from fire administration over to some kind of engineering I grew up, my dad is a uh, electrician at the time, um, retired, spent 30 plus years at uh, Fort Eustis in civil service. And I really loved what he did from a hands-on service approach and troubleshooting uh, the facility and equipment at Fort Eustis. So I started school at Thomas Nelson in mechanical engineering, finished my associates, switched over to Old Dominion University and went down the civil engineering uh, journey. At that time, I was fortunate enough to land a part time position at a company called Systems East Incorporated out of Hampton, Virginia which is a systems integrator specializing in water, wastewater. I started there part-time uh, in the panel shop, sweeping the floors and learning how to build panels from the 10 to 12 guys that were in the panel shop. Spent about two or three years in the panel shop ended up moving into a junior CAD designer position that led into a senior CAD designer position into a junior project manager position and then into a full-blown project manager position while I was going to school. So I was always working full-time and going to school part-time at night in the, in the afternoons. So that's really where my career and my journey started from a engineering background and going to school part-time and going to work full-time, it definitely takes a whole lot longer to get your degree than you think it would. And I spent way too many hours at Thomas Nelson and ODU uh, going to school, but I, I, I look at it now and I wouldn't change it for the world because I got a lot of real world experience very early on in life as it pertains to uh, engineering and automation and design and, and programming and startup and field service and building relationships with customers and people along my journey. And today I'm working for Electrical Equipment Company. So what were the different steps you took at Eco? Where, you know, where did you come in and, and how did that progress? So I came in to Eco in the services business unit for Rockwell. 
I spent a few years, probably about three or so years there selling most likely what we would call turnkey engineering projects. And I use the word selling and I, and I, I use that loosely. It was more of a consulting type of a role. Customers knew they needed to do something. They just didn't know what it was. And with my engineering and automation background, I hope that it led me to be able to be a a driver in what it is the customer would eventually try to get to as a end result, or at least part of what something I was consulting in would be part of the solution that they would go into. So I, I did that for about three years. I then took a move into my career as a, what we would all call a traditional outside salesperson or account manager and called on primarily, I would say the food and beverage industry and power generation industry and a little bit of the OEM type of industry. So I did that for roughly three or so, four years. And um, ultimately, I'm in the position that I'm in now that I've been in for about four years as well as a regional sales manager uh, out of the Richmond area. Okay, so they kind of built upon each other. You, you had these different opportunities come up. I didn't realize, Brian, I, as, as much as we've worked together over the years, that you had that ODU. So it was a, it was a civil uh, engineering is where you were there? Yeah, so I went into ODU. Took my my two plus two that Thomas Nelson and ODU have together. And it's funny when I say it out loud and I go two plus two because that was not how it worked for me. Again, I was going to school part time. So when you think about going to school full time, that's two years. Part time is four years. So I definitely have a lot of, of hours and travel associated with Thomas Nelson and ODU over the course of my journey. Well, that's really cool, though, man. And, and hats off to you, you know, for getting that. And we're, you definitely are a great influence on a lot of people here. You you lead a very uh, driven group of people, and we're you're in the front lines of a lot of different types of industry as well. What are you seeing, and what are you hearing? Some of those major challenges that industry is facing right now. I, I would say there's a handful of topics that come to mind. But no matter what the topics are, I think one of the interesting things when you look at whether it's me or any of the guys that are on the Central Virginia team, I think one of the benefits that we get as a distributor is the ability to go into different facilities, whether it is a cookie maker or it is a maker of pharmaceutical goods or it is a maker of these other products that support our economy and our world and our, 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 our functionality. We get to see a lot of the challenges that they face, and they're pretty much similar challenges uh, depending upon whatever those topics are. And we get to see how people fix things and how they resolve those challenges. And then we get to take what I would say one customer's lessons learned and help other customers apply either that lesson or a very similar lesson, which really, I believe, puts us in the position of being more of a consultant type of a group than what somebody would say is a sales distribution operation group or company. Okay. Well, very good. Well, I, I, I'm with you on some of those those items that you outlined. And Brian, we're trying to influence people, you know, and, and give them an idea of of what's behind the curtain, if you will, for some of these different roles and, and a role like yours. What would be some advice you would offer up that that listener out there if they're considering to come to this industry? I would say one of the one of the most interesting things when you think about an electrical distributor in today's world is the ability no matter what degree that you graduate with, there is a position within inside of ECO that is very relatable to that degree or the field that you would want to go into. 
I think one of the neat things that I've, I've had the ability to do over the last three years is to be involved in our VCU internship program. And it's been an eye opener for a lot of the people that come out of VCU who are coming out with engineering degrees. And, you know, when they're in school, they have this mindset of, I know exactly what I want to go do, or I think I know exactly what I want to go do. And it's really interesting to have them come on board with ECO and see all the various roles that we have, whether it is a inside sales or operations or logistics or an HR or a consultant or an engineer or an outside sales. There are so many different areas with inside of ECO that a, that a, that a student or somebody earlier in the career can come into. It, it, I tell you, it's from looking at the last ing- the last internships that came through. One of our interns, um, not this past year, but the year before, actually has a job with Rockwell Automation, going through their management program. And he was an engineer who, at the beginning, when he came into the internship, was going, "Hey, I really just want to be an engineer." But then he came and saw the the consultant side of the engineering and automation world. And, and I believe that's what helped him sort of uh, hone into what he wants to do next. That's awesome. So getting that exposure to that world perhaps guided him to a, a role that is better suited for what he's trying to achieve, man. That's, that's a great, great story. So Brian, you know, we also on these hero episodes love to give an opportunity for shout outs for people who have been mentors, influencers for you in your career. Who would they be? Man, everybody around me. I'll tell you, it's funny. I mean, and there's there's definitely a handful that that jump out at me. But when I think of everybody that I've worked with throughout my career in the, the last 20 ish years of being in engineering, automation, industry, the one thing I think I tried to learn early in my career is there are skill sets that everybody has that are definitely strengths. And I believe when we all think about trying to become the best version of ourselves, we try to pull from everybody around us because we're all really good at something. So I've always tried to find the really, really awesome things inside of people and go, man, I want to be more like that guy. So everybody around me influences me. Uh, when I think about in my earlier days of my career at Systems East, there were a handful of engineers and even the owner, Buck McLaughlin of Systems East, the CEO, was absolutely uh, somebody who helped me throughout my career. He always helped challenge me. Uh, he always put me in uncomfortable positions to learn more. Um, my brother-in-law, Scott Wilkerson, another one, he's an engineer as well. He always helped push me and try to, you know, say, Brian, you know, put yourself in those uncomfortable positions because that is where you're going to learn more. Very good, man. There were some great, great people, some great influences. And I love how you tied back that everybody influences you and you try to, to pull those things, those qualities out and you know, put them into your own life, man. That that's very insightful. And Brian, when I like to ask this question this way: When do you find yourself in that moment of flow where it's just clicking and you're loving what you're doing, man? What 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 are you doing in that moment? I believe it really comes into being of service, and I think that's one thing that I've always enjoyed no matter what part of my life or career that I've been in. And that is just of being of service and of value to anybody. And within ECO, you know, you've got the internal workings of a company. And when you're of service for that company and you're providing value, that's something that you can put your head down at night and feel really good about doing. It's the same thing with customers. When I can get engaged with a customer, and be able to help them and provide value and service of a solution to them is really when I feel the most connected of, hey, 
I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm here doing what I should be doing. Very good. Very good. I mean, it, that service is so important, man. I, I, I think that uh, when we, we get in those moments and you get that flow going, it's, it's, it brings so much joy. And now, Brian, to kind of maybe a little fun with this question, you know, a lot of times people think of sales and sales management, they have a, a perception, you know, a lot of times it flips to maybe, a, a you know, a car dealerships and you're dealing with that salesman. And he says, well, I need to go talk to the sales manager. So if you had a chance right now to debunk, you know, something out there about that's perceived about the sales manager role, what would that be? You know what I, I would I would step back too, and I think this is a, a, I, I love the question. It reminds me of a of a, uh, uh, a sales call. It's uh, that I went on many many years ago, early in my career. A uh, new sales guy coming into a new customer, sitting down with a you know probably ten or so engineers. Their maintenance engineer, reliability engineer, all automation engineering guys were sitting at the table, and and here comes this new sales guy walking in the door. And it became really clear that their experience with salespeople was exactly that scenario that you just painted. It was, hey, here comes this sales guy. And I could feel that I could feel that pretty early on in our conversation. And I, I did make a statement that I hope changed their perception of me as a salesperson, which I believe is the same perception that most customers should have of an eco salesperson. And my statement that I made to him was, Hey, here's my business card. I understand that it says outside salesperson on it, but at the end of the day, I want you to feel that I'm part of your team and I work for you because if you feel that I work for you and I share the same domain email address that you share, I, that's the kind of partner level relationship that I want to have. My job isn't uh, my job isn't going to be here if I don't get to that level with you. And and that's the same thing as a sales manager. All of my guys, I hope, feel the same way. It's not, hey, I've got a manager. I've got a manager. It's I've got a guy who's on my team who has as just as much interest as me achieving my goals as I would a customer achieving their goals. That's great, Brian. That is absolutely great. You know, when you think about the things you've accomplished in your career, you've, you've done a lot of different things. You've, you've definitely had a lot of wins. Does anything stand out as a highlight for you? You know, I guess overall what stands out as a highlight for me is just being able to get where I'm at today. I'm, I'm very appreciative of all of the mentors that have been around me, all of the coworkers that have been around me, all of the customers that I've learned from. I mean, when I think about what I know now, it's because customers have shared a lot of valuable information with me and, and given me knowledge on how they operate and work, which has really empowered me to be able to learn the things that I've learned and get to where I'm at in my career today. So, I mean, just overall, the ability to get to where I'm at and help people is, is reward enough for me. I feel you, man. I feel you. You know, things are changing every day with this, particularly with COVID, Brian, from a manufacturing standpoint. Just curious on what your take is. What do you see as potential past and uh, that technology could play in the future regards to manufacturing? There's a lot of things that have changed in the last 15 years of automation. There's a lot of things that have changed in the last five years of automation. Most customers are still on their journey. And I don't think that journey ever ends, right? We're, customers are still trying to do more with less. They're trying to be more productive. They're trying to be more efficient. Uh, they're trying to be more reliable. And technology is really the key to help them get to that place. And with how fast technology is evolving and changing, we have to also be thought leaders in that technology for our customers. 
So when you think about, you know, customers who are still on their journey, they're going through their smart manufacturing journey, their industry 4.0, their connected enterprise, all of those words mean different things to customers, but it's still all part of a journey and the technology and the ability to integrate and deploy that technology as fast as possible is really the key for our customers. So when, when I try to think about a specific technology, probably the one that sticks out to me the most is just actionable information. And what, what I mean by that is there's a bunch of data on a plant floor, but being able to take that information serve it up to where it makes sense for a customer to take action on that information is probably from an, an overall technology standpoint where I see most customers that are still in their journey as they're trying to evolve through that journey. Very good. So thank you, Brian. I mean, that's, it's definitely a changing world out there. COVID is making people think differently too about how they access information. And I really appreciate your insight. You know, Brian, in a role like yours where so much is changing so fast on a daily basis, new technology coming out, new new solutions, things like that, just, just managing just a sales force. How do you continue to learn to stay on top of all this? That's funny. I, I think about trying to learn. It's almost like you're forced to learn at certain points, right? Because things are always changing. Everything is so busy. There's topics that come up every day that you wouldn't think about. The good news is not only are we sort of forced to learn things, but we have a lot of smart people at Eco from our outside salespeople, inside salespeople, logistics people. And you look at all of our product managers who are subject matter experts in certain verticals of their business units. We're surrounded by a lot of smart people who bring things to the company every day that they feel could impact our customers in a positive way. You know, of course, everybody goes online and reads articles and gets on LinkedIn and looks at a bunch of posts and starts to dig in from that perspective. But really just learning internally from people that are bringing ideas Again, I go back to the word of thought leaders. We have a lot of great thought leaders within the organization that help us learn and challenge what we think might be the right approach for customers. No doubt. No doubt. Thought leaders is a great way to put it. And now, Brian, let's go ahead and take a, a, a turn off the road of, of eco in your, in your career. And let's, let's dig in and let our listeners learn a little bit about you outside of work. So, Maybe, what do you enjoy doing in your time away from Eco, man? Oh, I don't get away from Eco. I I work every day, every hour, every minute, buddy. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I'm I, just kidding. I feel I'm you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's what it feels like. And I'm sure everybody out there probably feels the same way right now. Especially right now, it's really hard to turn off and get away because you can't go anywhere. You know, before this, uh, I was pretty active Fitness wise in the gym, I grew up playing soccer. So I've always been a very active person. I like to push myself physically. That's one of the ways that I get to de-stress and sort of turn off. I, I love going fishing. I would like to say that I like playing golf, but I can't get good at it. But I guess I'm going to keep on trying. Um, but definitely just being outside and getting fresh air and spending time with family. And we've always really been into rescue dogs and so we've always got some kind of four-legged animals running around here. That's pretty cool, man. Now, from a, from a gym standpoint, what kind of stuff are you doing there? So, you know, I started off a long time ago just doing the standard gym routine that everybody gets engaged into, and that's how big and strong can one get. I've realized later in life that I don't even care about that. I want to be functional. I don't want to pull a muscle when I'm grabbing the groceries or something. So I've really switched over my training regiment to be more of a functional fitness guy. I joined a new gym, uh, a local private gym here in Richmond, um, Pure Fit. They're a great organization, very small, uh, tailored, structured classes, small number of people. 
very challenging, very fun, but it's really all around just functional fitness and just being in overall good shape. So is that kind of like, you know, like your hit classes to high intensity, like interval training, or is it a mixture of that or what? It, it definitely is. I mean, it's, it's, it, it ain't no, it ain't no CrossFit. I, I promise you that much. I look at what those people do in a, in a workout and I get tired just reading what they're doing, but it follows, it probably follows some of the same principles. I would say one of the biggest, one of the biggest differences in what I'm doing and what a, a normal CrossFitter does today is they do a lot of Olympic style lifts and we don't do any Olympic style lifts. I mean, we do our deadlifts, uh, we do our squats, but they do a lot of other things that, you know, those increased chances of injury per se, especially if you're not doing them right. And in a class setting, it's it's hard to make sure everybody's doing something right at one time. So it's a lot of just functional style training. But yes, it is very, you know, high intensity. It's one hour. And at the end of that hour, you're laying on the floor and you can't breathe. That is awesome, man. So, is, so there are classes. So do you, do you like that group environment? Do you feel like that helps push you? You know, it's funny. Um, for many, many years, I don't know. I've been, I've been training since I was probably in my late teens. I always enjoyed just, you know, going to the gym and taking out all the stress and leaving it there behind. And I used to train a lot by myself, right? I, I go in the gym, I put the earphones in. And it's leave me alone for an hour, hour and a half and let me get after it. I did that for such a long time. And then I, I went to change up my training style and didn't know what to do. So I actually joined this gym. And I, I, I learned really quickly that I actually missed having the people around me with a common goal that we were there together helping each other. There are many days that I go into the gym and I'm not motivated. We're all in that same place. Life's hard enough, right? So sometimes when you try to be motivated every single day, it's really hard to get motivated. So to replace the motivation, you got to have discipline. And you're not always going to be motivated, but you got to be disciplined. So it's really nice to be able to go into the gym on the days that you're not motivated and you see your buddy and you guys are there to do something around the same time doing the same thing, it really does help when you got somebody there, you know, patting you on the back or smack, smacking you on the back saying, let's go. And, and hopefully there are days other people aren't motivated and I can be that person for them as well. No doubt, man. I mean, I know COVID's impacted so many people financially in, in different ways, but from for guys like you, I know me too, I, I missed that gym environment and being able to, uh, you know, work with others and get pushed by others. It's, it's hard to do that, in, uh, you know, on your own sometimes, particularly when you're used to that, right? I mean, it, it makes it a lot more difficult. Yeah, I. Uh, it's really funny. I don't know how I figured this out, but I bought a new pair of running shoes the week before the whole COVID word even came out because I told myself, I'm going to try to run a little bit more this summer. So I bought a brand new pair of running shoes. And I've, I don't know how many miles I've got on them in the last eight weeks or so, but it's probably a couple hundred miles. And it's made me realize running is just not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you 100%, brother. That, I've, I've but, never been a runner. But I get out there and I just, hey, I go back to the old me. I put the headphones in and I try to make it as much fun as I can. That's right. Well, everybody's adjusting right now, you know. You know, Brian, we'd love to have in these episodes a peek into our personal lives, too, from a family standpoint. So what what would you like to share with our listeners uh, about your family? You know, it's uh, it's interesting when you think about if we're all at home, we're actually around our family more now than we ever have been. And that can be challenging. And it can also be really, really rewarding. And the rewarding part is what I really like to focus on the most. And that is I actually get to eat more meals and have more conversation because before this happened, it was just go, go, go. You know, the hustle and bustle of our days that turn into weeks that turn into months. 
it's amazing the things that we've been able to actually accomplish because we have been sort of forced to be here. So now the weekends, for some weird reason, I don't know why, they feel longer and we get to spend more time and do more fun stuff with each other. That's awesome, man. I mean, you're right. It's it's definitely drawing us together. Uh, like it or not, we're together, right? <laughs> so, you know, definitely I, I personally am enjoying, you know, just the opportunities that we've never had before. Because you're right, man. Life can go, it goes fast. And uh, this has forced a lot of people to slow down and, and time at the dinner table and those conversations, uh, you know, are, are definitely meaningful. So, you know, Brian, what are you curious about right now, man? What 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 interests you? It could be within work or outside of work. I know everybody has different things that uh, peak up and they start studying. Just curious what, uh, what that is on your list. I would say a lot of my interest right now, when I think about is, is, is coming out of what we're, what we're all going through right now is what, it, what is going to happen next. And I know a lot of customers are going to go back to, and we're going to go back to, these are the things that we have to do to get back to where we were in our in, in our, each of our own individual business models. But I hope that we've also taken a little bit of this time to focus on the larger gaps and things that we didn't have time to do within our each of our own organizations. So when I think about like, what am I curious about when we come out of this thing, especially is what impact can ECO and our resources have for where our customers are going to go to next. Because I know a lot of our customers have learned things about themselves. I know Eco, we've all learned things about ourselves during this time. And and we can can change some of that stuff now because we've had the time to learn about it. So I tell you, I'm, I'm really interested to get back out there and learn more from all of our customers on what they learned during this time and then what is their next action moving forward? And then how can Eco be a part of that? No doubt, man. We're all looking forward to that day, aren't we, buddy? Amen. Well, Brian, we love to, we call this Eco Ask Why. We love to wrap this these episodes up with getting to the why. And when we say why, we're talking about the purpose. You know, what drives you? What is that motivator? So if you were to answer that, you know, what is your what is your personal why? I go back to just being being of service. I really do. We're all on this wonderful earth for many, many reasons. But when you think about what we're all actually doing at the the root level of it, we're all here to help service each other and and be of service in one way or the other. Um, so when you think about, hey, why am I here? And if if I could be doing anything else in the world, I can promise you one thing. It would still be servicing and helping others. I love it. I love it, man. I mean, it, servant leadership, that's come up several times in, in different episodes. And I, it really the, the, it really speaks to uh, the character. So, Brian, I've really enjoyed this, this conversation with you. I know our listeners are going to enjoy. Uh, it gives them a, uh, some insight to what, from an electrical distributor standpoint, but also just your career and, and the electrical industry how exciting and rewarding it can be. And, and to your point, it's not always uh, a straight line. It can have many different twists and turns. And that that's the great part about being in this industry, period, is that where it can go, man, it, it's, it's really up to you. It's just if you get in it and you hustle, great things happen. So, Brian, thank you so much for taking the time with us, man. Absolutely, buddy. I appreciate it. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I can promise you if, if, if you – and a lot of people don't have the same day twice in a row or the same day in a month. I can tell you for the last 10 years or so at Eco, I've never had the same day twice. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy and, and appreciate about the challenge of, of not just, you know, our industry, but specifically being a part of electrical equipment company is every day is not the same. And there's never two days that are, that are the same. So There's no chance of getting bored here. I can promise you that much. Not at all, my friend. I'm with you there. And that's, that's really been the blessing. And just, uh, we had, we had a guest who said, you know what? I live the the show, how it's made. And I love it because I get to see all the different stuff that gets made out there. And, 
uh, this industry just really gives that that opportunity that uh, you really can't get in, you know everywhere you go. So hats off, hats off to you, man. You're a great leader. You're inspiring a lot of people. And uh, I, I'm gonna, instead of calling it a hero episode, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the legend. So thank you for this legend episode, man. Uh, you're welcome, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.